Easy people, here is a really blindingly fast one. Um, this is how I would use Ableton Live um, for my workflow. Um, you don't have to have it. If you'd like to say that, I've said it before, I'll say it again. If you don't have a computer, then don't worry about it. You can carry on with whatever you do. If you have a computer, this is really advantageous to use with Archive Force because it's free and um, you can use this for prepar preparing audio and MIDI to use in Ableton Live because it helps loads. So what I would do normally is I would go here and I'd get whatever sample I'm going to use. Say if I was even going to do a full live track, I could go in here and I can warp a track. The warp on here is the official warp. The warp in Ableton Live, that ain't warp. It's just the words warp. It might as well be Star Trek because it doesn't do what this does. I'm going to give an example. I'm going to get something here, a break beat, and I'm going to go like that. This is a break beat. Now, it's probably going to give it, it's, it's, it's took an attempt. It's short enough to take an attempt to see if it could warp this. If this, because this is a live drum, if it couldn't warp it or it was like, oh, I don't know where this is going, it would look like this. It'd be all gray, and then you can kind of set the warp markers yourself. I, actually, I might have warped these because I, um, I probably have. But anyway, let's see what it is. So we'll play this. Right. So that's all over the place. That's not landing in the right place. And I know why, because it's, it didn't start in the right downbeat, because it goes. And the first beat is it's there. So the first thing I want to do is I want to set that there. So now that's the first downbeat. And it's still ropey. That's all right. A couple of ways I could do this. I could re-warp it or I could say, yeah, shove it. I'll stick with it. Stick with how it is. I'm going to stick out with how it is for the moment because I can't be bothered and it's fine. So the only thing I need to see is, well, where is it loose? So that's fine there. What you can do is these warp markers you create by just clicking on them and it clicks on. You've got to have one warp marker in to begin with. So that one is the one that I set because I set the first, well, it's already set, but um, can I set another one? And let's just see, yeah, if I right hand click, I can set another one here and then it would move this. So if I set that there, that's where it would move to. I don't want it there because that would be in the wrong beat. So I've got that there. Then I'm playing this. That's all right. Goes a bit loose where here. So it says it goes a bit loose there, I think. I can move that. That's that. So it's a little loose there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a little um, like blocker. I call them blockers by putting a warp marker there by double clicking there. That means none of this is affected now. Only this going a, a, um, ahead is going to be affected. So I'm going to move that. So that's now on point. So I like that. It's getting loose again. So I'm going to use that one because it's there where it's loose. It's slightly off, as you probably can see. I can see. And these grey ones are transient markers. So you can see the transient markers there. I'll move that. That'll tighten that up. And look at that. It's not going to move anything else. So now look at the line. Look at how that's nice and tight there. And it's still got a loose feel. So Blam. you don't have to do this. You can... Um, yeah, so that's that. So you don't have to do this. You can actually right hand click on here and you can make it man you can make it automatically warp that. I don't because like I say, um I use my ears because this is gonna be the computers might do something and it might not see something like a hi hat there. So I, I like to go through the tracks and manually warp them myself, but you don't have to and it put it this way. You can do a mixture of both where you can make it warp something. So you can say warp from here. And then like if it was, a, imagine this was a five minute tune, you might not want to manually fix a five minute tune. So you walk from here, play through it, and then you might just fix up little bits because that's what I do. So say I've got that there and I say, all right, then let me just, um, yeah, that's fine. So I'm going to put the loop in. Um, I'll make that two bars long there by going to there and then I'll just move that and that's two, my nice two bars so 
that's why I would use that. That took no time at all, none. I was talking while I was doing it. If I wasn't talking, that would have took probably about four seconds. If I was to try and attempt to do that, just even that little bit in, in like um, the Akai Force, it'd probably take, and I think I'm all right, eh? probably take me about five minutes to do that. It'd, it'd probably be just easier to slice than it would be to do that. But this is, this is still warped. Um, another thing what I can do now is, say if I went, uh, I don't know, something like this. Not that I'd want to do this, but as an example, I can do this. So maybe I move that there. Obviously, I won't want to do any of that. It sounds like mush. But what I'm uh, what I'm basically saying is, I can move all of the the rhythm. I can change the rhythm in something. So that would definitely just to do something like that would probably take about twenty minutes to do something like that. And why would I? Why would I want to do that? I've got I've got a life. So that's another reason. Like I say, per preparation. Another reason why you might want to use this is it's got six time stretching algorithms as opposed to one time stretching algorithm on archive force for anybody out there being pedantic yes there is two time stretching algorithms on archive force but you only really want to use one that's the truth of it you want to use the best one because what's the point otherwise so there's no reason to turn it down all of these work differently on different materials. It actually tells you here what's brilliant about this is if you look in this side thing, if, you, if you're not quite sure about something, it'll tell you how it works. So that's that. There's only one more thing I would advise to do when you've finished um, preparing the track, you should right hand click and freeze the track. The reason why you want to do that, don't flatten the track unless you want to flatten the track, which you can by just pressing flatten is if you do that then when you imp when you open this up you don't have to import anything you just have to literally open it up you go to the folder and open up the um able and life thing and it'll just automatically open up if you don't do that what it's going to do is it's just going to read the first marker so it's only going to read that so any things that you've done uh, past that are not going to work they're just going to be ignored. So that's why you always want to freeze it. You don't have to flatten it, but you do have to freeze it. Um, the difference between flatten and freeze, since I've explained um, freeze, flatten will try to, well, it won't try to, it will. It'll do a double, it'll do it twice, just in case you've clipped the beginning of the first beat. So whenever you do flatten, which I'll show now because I've talked about it, I'll go in here, and I'll go flatten, it's doubled it up because it, you might have clipped there and also because you might want to start doing funky things. What you can do in um, the archive files, you might want to make it loop backwards or anything like that, so it does a double. So that's that. And then the last piece, um, what I use it for is plugins. And I only use it for one plugin, I use it for Scalar, so I can go up Scalar, which is like a super duper advanced version of um, the notes um, in Akai Force because I can go to scale. It's got a whole load of, imagine these are progressions, they're like progressions, but it's got loads and you, and you can make your own progressions as well. But you, you've got additional things like, right, C minor. Say I wanted this tune and it was in C minor. I've got on me for C minor there, but I could say, right, I want it at seventh. So now it's got that seventh, but I want a different voice in here. So maybe, so maybe I'm maybe I'm on triads, right? But I'm using a different voicing. That's a different voicing. I've got seven voicings. That's doing something different again. So the, put it this way, there's nothing like that in the archive force, and that's that's just that. Now if I go to edit. It's got a whole heap of stuff inversions on top of that. So that's why I would use that. And then all I have to do is drag it into there. And what do I have? I have MIDI. 
So when I um, open this up in the archive files, I've got MIDI and I've also got whatever this is. Um, I've got my sample and my thingy and it's already prepared for me to start banging out tunes. And the greatest thing about the MIDI is if I have the MIDI chords in there, I can create them into a progression so I can replay them in any way I want. So um, that's how I would use it. If there's anything that you were curious about that I didn't mention, this is not meant to be an Ableton Live tutorial. Um, the difference between Ableton Live Lite and um, an Ableton Live is 300 quid. If I haven't said that, I've said it now. And with 300 quid, what you get is you get a little extra bells and whistles. They're not that important. There's only one thing more, which truthfully ain't worth 300 quid, but it's the one thing I use more is that you can, um, you can extract harmony from audio. Um, the scaler doesn't do that good a job of it. So for example, if that we had musical notes in this sample, right? I could right and click on it and it would try to get the chords out of it. And it does a pretty damn good job. You have to clean it up. But again, the advance of that is when I get the chords, I can put them into scale and scaler is brilliant at finding chords when the MIDI. So as soon as it goes to um, MIDI information and I do it to there, it'll find the chords. So that for me would be hours of work to do that. And how long does that take to do? I don't know, um, two minutes. So that's that's the difference between Ableton Live and um, Ableton Live Lite. So like I say, you don't have to use it, but if you, it's free, go get it. And um, if you got Scalar, that's even better. So uh, I think that's probably gone on way longer than I wanted. Oh, one more thing I should mention as well is because now, that it's uh, it's flattened. You can actually fix the tempo in here as well. So I would do that. The reason why I'd do that is because when you freeze this, it'll fix the tempo and that this has got, like I said, six algorithms. So if I wanted to clean this, it's not necessarily the best. It depends on, it depends on the material. So for example, if this was a tune, you probably want the pro because that'll that'll fix the whole tune and it'll fix it nice. If it's if it's a little sample or you want it to be crunchy and punchy, and you want the drums to be dominant, you probably use beats. So that's good, the good example. But now, if I was to open this up and I'd freeze and froze this, and I put this ninety two, it would be tasty. So even if this beat was, let's say, well, do you know what? I've gone too far. I've put this down to 60. Check this out now. Right. So I can move through these transits. I can do a whole heap of stuff. What? 60 BPM. That would have fallen to pieces on the Akai Force. So now I, all I have to do is freeze this. Blam. And then open it in the Akai Force and that'll be crispy. So these are the, this is why I would use this. So I hope that's helped. You don't have to use it, but take advantage of the things that you have, I believe. But don't get don't get bogged down in things because what we are all to do is to make music and have fun. Well, I am. So anyway, that was too long. I hope that was helpful. And um, I'll give you the thumbs up in me. I don't know where I am. Till next time. Peace.